So we have 3p squared r squared plus 6pr plus p. So what we have to do for this problem is they want us to factor out the greatest common factor. Now, ladies and gentlemen, a quick little review for you. If you remember, what we worked on last class period was, you know, factoring. And one thing we looked at, you know, if we don't have a number that's not a prime number, meaning we can divide other numbers into it besides itself and one, we can then factor it into two different prime, two separate prime numbers. So if I was going to factor six, I could break that down into two factors other than six and one, which would be three and two. Now, the next thing we started also looking at was, let's say I did um, 12x squared. Well, if I wanted to factor 12x squared, then what I would have is I'd factor my 12, which could be 6 and 2, factor that again, which would be 3 times 2, then times the other 2, bring that down, and then we need to see, could we factor out x squared? Is x squared a prime number? Well, can x squared only be divided by x squared and 1? Or could you divide x squared by another number? And what we could do is figure out x squared can also be divided by x, right? Because when you do that, you get you subtract the exponents, so you obtain x. So when I'm trying to do factor out x squared, I get x times x. X squared can be factored as x times x. All right. Now let's see how that's going to kind of work. All right. So for this problem, they want us to factor out our greatest common, our factor out our greatest common factor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to write these all as just their prime factors. Okay? I'm not going to do anything. I'll just write them as their prime factors. Is 3 a prime number? Yes. Yeah, I can't do anything else with 3, right? Is p squared, though, a prime number? No, we can write it as what? p times p, right? So p times p, r squared, we can write as r times r. And plus, is 6 a prime number? Obviously, no. We can write 6 as 3 times 2, right? And then P and R, those are both prime numbers, so I'm just going to have to write those out. Jeez. What is it? Plus P. So now I look at that. Is that a list of all prime numbers? Yes. Is all those numbers can only be divided by themselves or 1? Out of all those numbers, everything I did up there, right? So now what we're going to do is we're going to see... You're going to take each one of these monomials that we've added. And since we've added three monomials, we have a trinomial, right? So now we have this trinomial. What do each one of these terms have in common? So what is the, um, we like to call it, you know, the greatest common factor. But right now, we only kind of have this one factor. What is the only thing all three of those have in common? What? Which one is it? P. P. The only, the only one they have in common is P. Right? These both have a 3, but does this term have a 3? No. This has an R, that has an R, but does that have an R? No. So the only thing we can factor out is a P. So when I say factor out, I pretty much mean divide out. Guys, think about it this way. If I said 6, what is a factor of 6? 2. two. two. So what do we do? We divide out the 2. So when you divide by 2, the answer, though, to that is not 3. How do we factor out um, the 2. What is our answer when we factor 6? What do we do when we factor out 6? We write it as a product of the two factors. So when I factor out a 2 from 6, the product of factoring 6 is 3 times 2. The answer is not 3. But the answer is the product of the two factors. So one of the factors that all three of these share is P. So I'm going to write P times what is the inside of the factor? Well, what happens when you divide 3p times p times r times r divided by p? What happens when you divide 4 divided by 4? What does that equal? 1. So what do you think x divided by x equals? 1. What do you think p divided by p equals? 1. There you go. So 1p cancels out. So I'm left with 3 times p. And did I do anything with the r times r? No. So I'm going to have to rewrite that as r squared. Plus, again, cancel out. <coughs> 3 times 2 becomes 6. R. Plus, P divided by P is, again, 1. So remember, even though I divide everything by P and I get my answer, 
all right? We write it as a product of the two factors. Now the next thing, remember, factorization says the product of two prime factors. So that means these have to be prime factors. What I mean by a prime factor, we obviously know that P is prime, but is this a prime factor as well? Does this, do all three of these terms have anything else in common? So therefore, that is a prime factor as well. So now I've rewritten this problem as a set of two prime factors. So the main thing, just to kind of recap again, is to find what they're, if you're having trouble finding out what they have in common, factor each term out. Then determine what they have in common, divide it out. Whatever you divide by, you're going to write out as one factor, and then your other, and then your answer is your other factor. Okay? All right. All right. So 